Welcome again. Right now we're at Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, all the way through to verse 23. Don't let anyone judge you, but not how you think. Don't forget, it's all about context. As they say, context, context, context. It's all about context. And I'm talking about a whole lot more than just reading a verse before, a verse after, a paragraph before, a paragraph after, a chapter before, a chapter after. I'm talking about the context of the culture in which this letter was written, and especially in which the people of Colossae lived. Colossae was a city that was known for its asceticism. It was known for people who believed that in order to be godly, you've got to really, really just, you know, be super, super afflicted. You know, you're not allowed to have any feasts. You're not allowed to enjoy yourself at all. You're not allowed to celebrate at all. You're not allowed to eat any kind of, you know, tasty food, anything like that. That is the culture in which the believers in Colossae was in, okay? I'm not talking about the believers themselves. I'm talking about their neighbors, so to speak. In that context, let's read this passage of Scripture. It will completely change the way you think about what this means because this is the truth. These are the facts. This is the context in which it is written. And in that context, you will see at the end of this video that this particular passage is actually the opposite of what a lot of people think it is. Paul says to the believers in Colossae, As therefore you received Christ Jesus, the Lord, walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, even as you were taught, abounding in it in thanksgiving. Be careful that you don't let anyone rob you through his philosophy and vain deceits. Okay, so Paul's starting to get into this, okay? Like people robbing you through their philosophy and vain deceit. And in context, it's people who say, oh no, you're not allowed to have any feast. You're not allowed to celebrate. We have evidence that the church in the book of Acts celebrated the feasts of the Lord celebrated the Sabbath days. But when they came to Colossae, they came into a people that thought it was a sin to celebrate anything. They thought it was unholy to celebrate anything. That is what Paul is about to address here. Don't let anyone rob you through his philosophy, the philosophy of asceticism and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the elements of the world, and not after Christ. For in him all the fullness of the deity dwells bodily. And in him you are made full, who is the head of all principality and power. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands, in the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. In other words, you were circumcised from sin. You don't sin no more. You don't sin against the law of God anymore. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. You were dead through your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh. Now he's talking about the uncircumcision of the flesh. So in other words, they must have been circumcised in the flesh now because they were dead in the uncircumcision of their flesh. So now they're not, which means they are now circumcised in the flesh. He made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses, wiping out the handwriting in ordinances which was against us. He has taken it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Having stripped the principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Paul is talking about sin here, nailing it to the cross, okay? This is what you are dead to. You are dead to sin. You are dead to the lusts of your flesh and to selfishness. You can say now, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I live in the flesh, in this body, in, earthen, in the earthly body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Let no one therefore judge you in eating or in drinking 
or in respect to a feast day or a new moon or a Sabbath day. Why would Paul say that? Because again, Colossae was steeped in asceticism. They were trying to tell the believers, don't celebrate the feast. Don't celebrate the new moons. Don't celebrate the Sabbath. You're not, you're not supposed to celebrate anything. You're supposed to be, you know, really, you know, afflicted. And, you know, that's what being holy is all about. You know, just to be afflicted and, you know, not to eat any tasty food or not to really enjoy yourself. Well, Paul's saying, no, that's not the case at all. The law of God commands us to enjoy ourselves on certain occasions, especially feasts and new moons and Sabbaths and so on and so forth. That's why Paul said, let no one judge you in eating or drinking or in respect to feast day or new moon or Sabbath. Eating here because the people in Colossae with their vain philosophy said that, oh no, you're not supposed to eat you know, all this delicacies. You're supposed to just fast and, and afflict yourself all the time. That's not the case when it comes to the law of God. So don't let anyone judge you in eating or in drinking in respect of a feast day because you obey the feast or the new moon or the Sabbath day because you, you celebrate it all, which are a shadow of the things to come, but the body is Christ. Let no one rob you. Again, he uses the same kind of terminology. Let no one rob you of your prize, your prize of obeying the law of God by self-abasement, asceticism again, and worshiping of angels, like false worship, dwelling in the things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding firmly to the head from whom all the body, being supplied and knit together, through the joints and ligaments grows with God's growth. If you died, if you died with Christ from the elements of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to ordinances? Don't handle, nor taste, nor touch. Again, this is addressing asceticism, all of which perish with use according to the precepts and doctrines of men. These things indeed appear like wisdom in self-imposed worship, humility, and severity to the body, but aren't of any value against the indulgence of the flesh. Now you know that what a lot of Christians think, that this is the passage, you know, telling you that don't let anybody judge you for not obeying the feast, for not obeying the Sabbath. It's actually the opposite. Paul is saying to the people in Corinth, to the believers, to the saints in Corinth, don't let anybody judge you for doing so because I know the culture in which you are in right now. They seek to rob you with their vain and false humility. Don't be deceived by it. Until next time, seek God with all your heart and if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.